Straw man fallacy or straw man arguments. What are they? Why do you need to be aware? Uh, there's many made against the Bible. Uh, to give a quick example, today I saw a headline that says Aaron Rodgers blames the media for the New York Jets 2-5 and five start. And then it goes on to say, oh, is it the media that threw the two interceptions, yada, yada. But when you go listen to the quote from Aaron Rodgers, it was in response to a question about how do you keep your team's belief in itself to make the playoffs up after a 2-5 and five start. And he said, well, first of all, tell them to stop listening to you guys. And then he went on to say, and, and bottom line, I got to play better. I, that's the biggest thing. I got to play better. But in response to a question about how to keep teams' hope and belief up, it was stop listening to you guys. Because he knows if they listen to the media, they're going to bury them and think they have no chance. Now, this is not about Aaron Rodgers or the Jets or about football but about a point about what we see every day. Anything you say can and will be used against you, just like in a court of law, but in the media where there is no unbiased jury, if there really is to begin with, but things are taken out of context all the time. And they painted a picture of what Aaron Rodgers said that had nothing to do with his actual intention. He was responding to a question, but his response to that question was then used to make an argument that he didn't make. He was not blaming the media for their start. He was saying to keep hope, we need to not listen to you guys. Not that you guys are the reason where we're at. Applying that to the world, politics, all the gaslighting, all the propaganda that's out there, they really, more often than not, take things that were said out of context and use them to build an argument. It happens all the time from the Bible when dealing with very difficult topics, such as abortion, such as slavery, things the Bible never condones, and people will actually use scriptures to endorse those things. They create straw man arguments. In, I think, uh, Luke 13, it's the Pharisees are condemning Jesus because he healed a woman who had been sick for 18 years, but it was on the Sabbath. They, based on seeing him heal a woman on the Sabbath, say, you don't care about the laws of Moses because you're doing work on the Sabbath. So they accuse him of blasphemy, of not abiding God's laws. So they accuse him of not being who he says he is. But he calls out their hypocrisy and their foolishness that they'd rather see a woman suffer than to, quote unquote, do work on the Sabbath. So God is always putting things in perspective, but when you take something as large as the Word of God, it's very easy to cherry-pick scriptures that can then be, then be used as arguments, strawman arguments, to condone or at least give the perception that Christians condone a certain way of life, but they don't. And maybe we'll get more into that one day, but it's very important to be aware of how strawman arguments are used to cherry-pick something that was said change the intention behind that, and then create an argument that wasn't being made, one that you can disprove or one that you can undermine to make your case for something that was never intended to begin with. So straw man arguments, something that's going on a lot, especially during this election season. Be aware of it. I'll end with this quote that I have right by my door. It's from Luke 13 or Luke 12:34. Where your treasures are, there is your heart. Or for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, keep that in mind too. All right, God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.